And we're live. I'll wait those few seconds to let my microphone kick in. Welcome once again to another episode of Legend of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign uh, in which uh, the universe has been reset to a thousand years before the previous campaign. And other things also seem to have been reset or misplaced, let's say. It is the Great Confusion, a worldwide event over Omesha. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, GM, home brewer, not for the interesting stuff, home brewer for D&D. Uh, and uh, I guess host and uh, dog's body and, uh, yeah, overworked. But that's okay. We're here to play. And in front of me, I have my players starting on my left with Pat. Hi, my name is Pat, and I'm playing Silas Marsh, cultist of Mother Hydra. Hi, uh, I am Marie, and I play uh, Annie, who is a rogue fighter and definitely not someone who probably shouldn't be going on random adventures. Oh, and Medric's muted. Medric has been, has, Medric has been magically silenced by forgetting to unmute. Hi, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half or cleric. <laughs> feel like there should be like a, a three word description because it's sort of like um you know the, the 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 cleric of the sun which is kind of like everything and then the definitely not a royal royal and then you know the the cultist it's like all hail hydra <laughs> but anyway uh we are venturing into a new realm just recently uh, the uh, rediscovered book, I guess you might say, from Argenti Sagax, a uh, plane hopping research organization, it's not entirely sure, um, was reunited with a ring of the same uh, organization, which uh, demonstrated that the book was still a viable magic item that brought the attention of Tassar, a ally strange uh, man in white who has seems to appear just as portals do and he's concerned with inner uh, planar problems of some kind uh, in this small town of Elthwater, which seems to be the, the the nexus point if you will of numerous problems and concerns at the moment the group is concerned with a couple of things several lost allies at this point three at least who seem to be have, have gone into some sort of extra planar space. And so in the pursuit of that, and maybe other goals to having to do with portals to other places, the group has agreed to work with Tassar, who has sent them through a ritual uh, into this place. With the idea that there are several possible locations where things like Nexus crystals, the, the core... Um, uh, core mechanism, the core center focus for interplanar um, portals could be uh, found. And having traveled through the ritual, I will say there's a couple of details that I forgot to mention at the very end of, or kind of as you were transitioning. And I want to kind of get them in there because they emphasize a bit on, on the strangeness of the area. As you travel through the portal, you found yourself heading downstairs. They were solid underneath, even though nothing else could really be seen. And at a certain point, there was a distinct shift in feeling. Almost as though the stairway was actually shifted by 90 degrees. And where you had been walking on the tops of stairs suddenly felt almost like you were walking on the fronts of stairs. And you found yourself stumbling a little bit and readjusting to then start climbing up stairs or down stairs. The perspective still felt a little bit strange. Freaking Escher staircases, I swear. Kind of. When you emerge from that staircase, um, I want to say that around the walls and on the stairs themselves are covered numerous glyphs, um, all connected in one large ritual space, um, almost as though it is somehow adorned for magical purposes. Um, and finally, when you stepped into this new space, a slightly uh, roundish, almost oval-shaped room, as soon as you started to breathe in the air of this new space, you were struck by how dry the air is and how almost um, 
uh, almost dusty, it feels, to the point that your first few inhales of breath when you got here instantly dried out your mouth and found yourself kind of uh, uh, with that that almost sharp problem, you know, when you enter a cold, dry space and your throat gets a little bit crinkly. That's the sensation you kind of felt as you came in, and that, that persists. As you came in and adjusted somewhat to the sights and to the sounds and to the sensations, you could hear the sound of, no- of voices echoing off in the distance. Uh, Medrick in particular had picked out a few different sounds of what seemed like voices, although the first you were heard was kind of a mumbly, grumbling, um, uh, almost animalistic voice, and yet there seemed to be the syllables of words in there that you could pick out from time to time. No words in specific, but syllables. Second to that, though, was a conversation between two familiar voices that seemed to echo around the space. One, a uh, confident, uh, mid-toned female voice, Um, speaking clearly with a very well-educated accent who you recognized as being the Baroness Harquin. Although the tone of her voice and perhaps some of the word choices she made does seem a little bit different from the Baroness that you met before, but that may also be depending on who she's talking to. In this case, the other voice that you picked out was the rumbling, confident, playful voice that you'd heard once before in another pocket realm, a realm of nightmare and a realm of challenge, uh, being the haunted house pocket realm, essentially, that you encountered the strange eyeball, with a uh, floating eyeball with eyeball tentacles wearing a bow tie, being Tau Zek Riva. So, you find yourselves here and now. You're accompanied by Dudek, Each of you has a small necklace that you've been given by Tassar, in which a sort of wire cube surrounds a small crystal suspended in the middle by wires, told to you to be somewhat of a protective mechanism, and also somewhat of a a directional antenna, if you will, for where there might be an exit portal. Behind you in the stairs, you do see nothing but darkness leading up or through the stairwell. You're not sure if you could return that way. You didn't have a chance to check yet, but you could. If you do look a little closer, you can feel that there does not seem to be any passageway there anymore. The steps simply vanish at a certain point, walking into the wall. So, what would you like to do? Let's head toward the voices. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now, as the not magic person here, um, I think that during this time, I'm kind of going to be following the lead of the magic people because I don't know what to expect here. They have a better idea of what things to look for. And I'm assuming that by now I, I would have explained uh that, well, because I roll high on the perception check, the, that there's voices and what they are and who I think they are. Um, and, uh, if, if we go towards the voices, uh, I don't know if Baroness and Tauzek Reba are going to be thrilled that we're in their domain. Dudek seems quite surprised to hear you mention the Baroness. I would not have expected to run into her here. Are you sure it wasn't just a voice that sounded like hers? I'm quite sure, and I'll, like, try to get him to listen. I'll cast guidance for him to listen properly. Okay. It's like she, she speaks at some intervals, and... All right, she's speaking now. Can you hear it? And as you co- both kind of quiet down and listen, and you're casting guidance with a little, little spurt of flame that comes out, Neither of you hear any conversation going on, because it was actually the end of the conversation that you heard before. Duh. I will take your word for it, but I'm not sure how the Baroness will be wrapped up in this. Now, remember, Here, remind me whether have... you had... you. I, I think you had leveled with the Dudek for everything or not. Because he, he was not aware of what happened. 
I was not 100% aware either. I think I thought that was mostly the Silas thing because I was like running away because my head hurt whenever she spoke. <laughs> well, and he, uh, he did not have the conscious experience that you guys no, did. No, he didn't right, remember right. anything. Uh, Silas would say that the Baroness is probably still under the control of... Uh, I can't remember her name. Something Wallow started with the C. Crypt Wallow. Crypt Wallow. Uh, the hag. She may be here representing Cryptwallow. And remind me again, how much of, of the Cryptwallow stuff did you tell Dudek before or now? I don't remember. I know that he didn't remember anything from that. I don't remember if we explained more. I, I don't know if, because I know that Melora and, yeah, he, he wasn't there for the catch up because Melora yeah, and uh, no. Verendel. No, that or... was just, um, yeah, because uh, Dudek was supposed to be leaving at that point. Yeah. So are you, how are you going to inform him or how much do you want to tell him? Silas would just say, uh, the Baroness is controlled by a hag named Cryptwallow. Are you, are you sure? How? how... Wait, what? Because <laughs> I don't think Madrick is privy to that either. <laughs> was he? <laughs> Well, Medrick would know that Crypt Wallow had been torturing her. Um, okay. I'm trying to remember. Crypt Wallow was involved with us getting out. I don't remember if you guys saw that the Baroness had basically caved oh. in. No, because you had actually been responsible for that. and They couldn't enter the room properly. Yeah, I'm just remember, trying to remember if there's anything later when we did go back. Because we went back to the room, but uh, probably not. Uh, yeah, Silas will say that uh, uh, Crypt Wallow ha has taken control of the Baroness. And that uh, she probably is using her as an avatar here or something. That seems rather distressing. Do you think this is likely to be... I'm going to need to process this for a minute. I'm not sure what that means entirely. No, well, there was a lot of distressing stuff that happened at the party that none of, that uh, you don't remember. Um, but that was that was certainly one of the big ones. All right. And this other one that you mentioned, uh, Tau something? Tau Zek Riva is the beholder that we met at the fair. I'm surprised you hadn't heard of him if you were connected to that. Well, I was traveling with them, but I, it was mostly a convenience for me to be in different places. I didn't really explore too much of the offerings. There's also a little bit of money to support my operations. People are always impressed by strange things that they see. I collect a lot of them, so... Mm. Well, he ran the haunted part of the haunted house, which we're pretty sure took place in a separate dimension or something. Yeah, we might have uh, broke it accidentally. I see. And now he's here, wherever here happens to be. Yeah, whatever dimension we're in. Mm. Do, um, which one was Taras or Tassar trying to send us to? Was he trying to send us to Melora's one or Catherine's or he didn't random one? Say, well, he seemed more invested in Catherine, so I'm assuming he would have sent us here or to get Catherine. Yeah. Well, we should probably head along and. Wonder, but uh, um, if we do encounter the Baroness, it is vitally important that we do not uh, kill her or probably hurt her too much, as that could be even worse than uh, what you might suspect. What the heck? Dudek's a, <laughs> Dudek's a friend. Uh, 
the Baroness is being used as a container to hold an ancient dragon, we think. And if it gets out, things will be very, very bad. I really think that I should have slept more this morning. This is a lot to take in. Mm. Welcome to the club. Indeed. Well, <laughs> and here I thought it was something simple, like an ancient group of trans-dimensional travelers that I've been looking into. Well, that does pose interesting problems. I'll have to... I'll have to think about that at another time, I suppose. As for where we are, if truly this Tassa was able to push us through a plane, if I had to guess, I would say it is the plane of earth, a plane of ground, stone, as numerous names uh, would account for the dryness. And, uh, and he kind of walks over and knocks on the stone, and it has a very heavy non-responsive knock in a way. Stone looks as though it's been magically transformed. A little bit of tool marks left over, but not much. Uh, seems to hold and seems to be quite sturdy. Maybe a natural cave initially. There are many. At least according to my reading, I've never actually traveled through multiple planes before. It's actually rather exciting. And this is where you also start to realize that everything that Dudek knows is theoretical. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yep. It's okay. That's, better than nothing. That's mostly better than us. To be fair, most of what I know is theoretical as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are rather fortunate, actually. I mean, some of the readings that I've done about the, if this is indeed the plane of, of Earth, um, there's a very scarce quantity of any sort of air in much of it. So the fact that we have something breathable seems good if it's a bit dry. Oh, that's, yeah, that's definitely good to know. Don't lose your cube. I wonder if Tessar knew this when he sent us here. Huh. Um, as you're kind of talking sure. and discussing and catching um, uh, Dudek, wow, my my name skill word can't know. <laughs> um, as you're catching Dudek, Dudek up on the situation a little bit, um, Medrick, you kind of notice again that grumbly voice once more. And from just on the edge of your vision, you see a little bit of a greenish glowing light as the voice grows a little bit stronger. Guys, we got company. I'll whisper. What, what I'm going to, like, hide flat on the edge of this wall. Yeah, Silas is going to yank uh, si uh, Dudek over to, to hide behind the wall. Okay. Uh, I will have stealth rolls from all of you, please. I'm going to put my cloak in front of me, just... So it obscures that big like glow that I'm giving off. Stealth roll. What's my stealth again? I'm pretty sure it's zero, but just in case. Yeah, it's zero. Four. You rolled higher than I did. <laughs> so two and yeah. a four. I suppose I could ask for what uh, Annie has, but I don't know if it's going to matter. 27. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like... <sighs> And he whispers, y'all shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, and yeah, now my beyond uh, 20 is not functioning. So I'll just, I just tell you. Yeah, you just need to refresh the page. Refresh the usually. page. Usually. Right. See what this does. In the past, that has helped me. Um, yep. No, it's not. It's not there. All right. No worries. I know. I see the roles. So I'll just tell you what they are. You can you guys can trust me. Uh, Dudek actually rolled a 16 for a total of 18, so he's he's pretty much fine. Uh, however, uh, how does uh, Silas and Medric completely fail to stealth? How do they completely uh, fail to stealth? Let's start with uh, let's start with uh, Medric. How do you fail stealth? Well, I want to like cover myself with my cloak, okay? Because I kind of emit a natural light, which is not good in darkness situations where you're trying to like stay hidden. So I unclasp the cloak when it's like, it's stuck. It's like, fuck, 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 fuck. Then it's like, I, I, I got it. Then I drop it on the floor. And it's like, Shh. 
and it makes noise. So I kind of wonder too if if in in trying to cover up your natural glow, um, you're almost turning it into a strobe as it kind of cross, crosses across the light and then and then free, releases again and then so it's like a flashing light as opposed to trying to cover up the light. Then I, in the end, I'm like, "Fuck this shit," and I'll just like put it back on right away. <laughs> and it happens. And it happens. Uh, how does hammer comes out in case uh, a, a situation escalates? <laughs> All right. How does uh, Silas have difficulty stealthing? Uh, Silas uh, was trying to move Dudek to the side of the door uh, and uh, basically does not go far enough. So he Dudek is behind the wall, but Silas is not. So I was going, good, hide there. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> All right. Uh, and so you're kind of taking a moment there as you hear something. Uh, moving into view and actually at the noise and at the flashing of light uh, you hear it kind of uh, make this uh, grumbly more like language but also kind of uh, a little bit less coherent more of an utterance it's like uh, there Uh, as floating into view um, you see this strange eyeball shaped thing ahead of it is a glow of green wherever it seems to look just on the edge of your vision it i'll looks, get back into the room it looks about um probably only about uh, a foot and a half two feet large but hovering about three feet off the ground i do want to say the ceilings are about 15 feet here so they're fairly sizable, and they do look like they're, they're worked stone. You can see in that other room, just a little bit from where you are, um, Medric, that uh, there's a um, almost a, additional carvings around the room. So it, it gets fancier, perhaps, once you're uh, further in from the front door. Um, I'm going to spin it a little bit more here. Uh but as it's come around, it's 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 kind of looking straight at you, or at a kind of a weird angle, um, where you, and you can't really see it much either from where you are, Medric. But you can kind of make it out a little bit, and you definitely see the glowing of light as it starts to move quicker towards you. Do we have time to get out of the hallway and back into the room? We're gonna roll initiative to find that out. All right, four. <laughs> It's like two fours in a row. Good, <laughs> I forgot to highlight my character. My bad. Wait. I'm having most problems. Yay. Silas manages to go dead last. Uh, possibly. I yeah. mean, it is slightly typical. <laughs> uh, it's even worse than typical. <laughs> oh, AFK, like 20 seconds, mom needs something. Okay. Huh, okay. Did actually put that there then. Yeah, almost not dead last. So yeah, <laughs> Beyond Twenty is working for one page, but not the other. <laughs> uh. Okay. Um, yeah. It... Sorry, I'm just kind of shocked that it's both there and not there at the same time. So, 
that was not a successful upgrade from uh, Beyond 20. Sorry about that. Um, I will uh, sort descending. There we go. So we begin with Annie. Now, you're fairly aware because this thing has started making additional noises, and the noises have gotten closer, and you've seen uh, Medrick kind of stiffen. I've seen what happened. I've watched it. It's like watching a train wreck. You can't stop. <laughs> yeah. If, if it had been a dance routine on stage, you would have been fine with the flashing light, but not so much when you're trying to stealth. You, yeah. however, are pretty sure that no one has noticed you. Probably not even them. Um, so you said that this is like the front entrance. So, f yeah, from the room, the only thing you kind of see is the stairs you came through and the sort of narrow passageway where Medrick is standing right now. I'm back. Okay. And there is nothing that is hideable behind. It's a round room. It doesn't seem like there's all that much in here. There. I'll say that there's sort of the, the remnants of stone, what probably was stone furniture, when you kind of close, take a closer look at it, benches, that sort of thing, but okay. not much otherwise. Um, you, you can hide behind our incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay on this side. Um, stay on that side of incompetence. <laughs> uh, what will I do? I will hold an attack with um, with vice. Um, if something, I actually no, I'll hold an attack with uh one of my darts. If something comes in and it tries to attack one of us. All right. Dudek is going to kind of move off to the side to see if he can see if anything comes in. And uh, he seems to be arming a spell. You can see around him as he as he traces out. Um, I never did figure out what his spell com or his spell focus is. Um, any suggestions of what Dudek's spell focus would be? The ring seems like it would be appropriate for him. All right. Ring with the big crystal on it. Um, I kind of imagine him now having one of those all-day sucker rings. Um, <laughs> uh, God, blast from the past. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'll say that he kind of... Uh, you see him move. It will be one thing I do know about him, but you see him move, and he doesn't move in some ways like a typical wizard, if there is such a thing. It For him, it is as much about his entire body shaping the the runes and symbols of the spell almost in a in a in a ritualistic almost dance like fashion but there seems to be something almost forceful behind the way that he's moving and at the very end he holds his hand out in front of him with the one of those rings uh which has crystals on or a di uh, jewels on both si inside and outside glowing there with a a white glow uh seems to be holding a spell uh, next up I'm, is, yep. I'm I'm not on the initiative because I didn't select my character oh, when I rolled, but I rolled sorry before, about which that. probably at the end. Uh, yeah, it goes no. just after the uh, thing. It gets to go while Medrick and Silas are three stoogesing in the middle of the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Medrick's trying to get shows. into the Medrick's trying to get into the room, and Silas for some reason is trying to get out. <laughs> it's like move, move, move. Oh, God, it's like a hallway at Costco during like Christmas shopping season. <laughs> Uh, too real, man. Uh, would you roll for initiative? <laughs> sorry, um, four, four. Okay. Um, I've also, rolled twice so far, and both were four. <laughs> I, I, I'm also encountering like it's mouse problems as well as screen problems. It's just a hideous day. Uh, however, uh, wow, we have initiatives on five, four, and three. Annie and Dudek were ready to go, and everybody else is like, "Give me a minute." Um. <laughs> But the creature will investigate. Kind of when funny. everybody rolls like shit, does anyone roll like shit? That's true. Uh, and it gets to about there and turns its gaze down the hallway. And now you can see 
more fully what this thing is. Uh, as I've already kind of given it away in some ways, it is a small ball-like creature um, with numerous uh, stalks on which there are tentacles, uh, but it is uh, weirdly feral in nature. And you can see that some of its lower stalks, instead of carrying eyes, uh, as all the top ones do, uh, seem to end in hook-like appendages. Uh, and it stares down at you, seeing pretty much, well, the two of you right there, actually. Uh, and it will... We pretend we're statues. Uh, I'll just wave at him, or it, or I'll wave at them. I don't want to assume the gender of the Beholder-type creature. Well, in this case, uh, it's probably a them. Um, okay. Almost partially because you feel that it's, in its in its uh, large, toothy maw, it seems to be muttering it to itself, which is a weird experience. Uh, let's see here. We have, will that roll properly if I do that? It does. Uh, did that roll? It didn't roll anything. Of course not. All right. Manual it is. Yeah, five. Yeah, I think that was from the, that was the initiative, I think. Yeah. No, I've got five and three for eye rays. Yeah. Um, well, there's eye rays afterwards. That's, I don't think there's another. That oh, was the initiative. Was yeah. The initiative. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's nothing. I even forget how to roll. This is terrible. So it just sees us and shoots at us, like no high. What's it, it does. It does. You get the ins the Damn. sense that it has one job. Um, so it will do. It also rolled the forest, so it's doing as good of a job. Oh wow, it's doing a really awful job. Well, those screen. are all D six rolls according to oh. this. Damn it, they, they are. are. They are. So uh, a pair of the eyes fixate forward. And seeing, uh, actually, I will have it make a perception check because it might actually notice uh, Silas. It's not really that great at noticing things. It's also not rolling. Even though it's just like a floating eyeball. Just, it's just <laughs> noticing Medric. It's all fascinated by the flashing lights. So all these are going to hit Medric. Um, first off, you see a pair of the eyes kind of come forward and almost dip down in front of the regular eyes and stare straight at you. Uh, please Hi. make a constitution saving throw. A 10. 10? That's probably not enough. Its gaze seems to bore in through your eyes, and you find yourself fixated on it. Silas standing beside uh, Medric, you notice him go rigid. Uh, I Medric, just said hi, dude. <laughs> Medric is paralyzed. Uh, then the, what was it, three? Well, this one's hilarious. Okay, you fail the dexterity saving throw because you're paralyzed. Um, however, actually see if that will roll. It does. Uh, it 15, does. 15, as uh, another pair of eyes kind of comes and almost looks like it's uh, silhouetting the other two, almost looking like ears. And from those, those pair, um, you see a straight line of, what? Well, actually, yeah, you can't look away. You see a straight line of fire boil down the hallway. It's 15 fire damage. But I believe you're resistant to fire damage, are you not? Uh, yep. So it's only seven fire damage in the end. Is he resistant or immune? Uh, not immune yet. Not Just immune yet. Okay. Uh, and so is, that, uh, is that an AOE? Does Silas get hit as well? It is not an AOE. It is a single okay. target. Uh, and then the third one, uh, let's see. Uh, you are paralyzed, which normally means you can't do... Uh, dexterity saves. Can you can you do strength saves when you're paralyzed? No, I don't uh, think so. Forget. Uh, you automatically fail dex and strength. All right. So you're also shoved back. Uh, I will have uh, Silas oh. make a dexterity saving throw. Uh -oh. <laughs> as you see, as you see, uh, Medric shoved back into the room. Twenty. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, place yourself you catch on me one, one side as you uh, as you go through. You can use your reaction if you want to try to grab him. 
Um, yeah, no, I, I just shoot and... the bastard instead. Now I I want to use my reaction to uh, grab Medrick and just like swing him to the side so he'd be near me and Annie instead of in the middle of the hallway. Okay, make a um, let's make it an acrobatics or athletics roll. You're either just tilting him or you're dragging him physically out of the way. Yeah, not a problem. 13. He's not resisting. It's mostly whether you can grab him in time, and certainly enough, you drag him off to one side. So I'll have him sort of dragged off with you. I'll move the eyeball out of the way. That's... Ah. I made it worse. <laughs> ah. right. um, and that is its turn. Uh, that means it is... Uh, Medrix, go. You are paralyzed. If you have anything saving else you throw? can do. Can I make a save? Or? There is no saving throw. What? Oh, sorry. Wait. Nope, that one does get a saving throw. So, yeah, constitution saving throw. Con save. Fuck. Not My enough. dice are cursed. Track the number of rounds this has gone on if you aren't released before it happens. Okay. I will tell you. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? Can I make another con save as a bonus action <laughs> by any chance? I'm afraid not. Uh, um, technically, you're doing the saving throw at the end of your turn. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to Silas, then. I suppose I can use this. That was uh, round one, right? Okay. Uh, Silas is a uh, bonus action to booming, or no, uh, bonus action to Shillelagh. And then, uh, I think he'll just ready an attack for when it, if it comes into the, uh, into the room. Okay. Uh, we are back to the top again. So Annie's up. Now, just for technical reasons, when it comes to it, when uh, Silas pulled um, Medrick back, is he still upright or is he now prone? I'm I'm going to be generous and say he's still upright. It was dragging a oh. statue; his legs didn't move, but he's still he's still upright. I'm leaning okay. against a wall somewhere. <laughs> okay. He's got a very sturdy stance normally, so all good. Um, I am going to stay where I am at, and I will ready. Um, I'll actually take out my bow, and I'll ready an attack uh, if if the creature comes out here. Actually, no. I might as well go to here. And try to get a better view of the door. So, so yeah, I can see to here. So, if it comes into view, I'll I'll shoot it there. All right. Um, Dudek's spell fades, and he kind of looks over at uh, Medric and the odd expect uh, odd experience that he's just had. Uh, but I think he's gonna do. Uh... Yeah, he's going to do the same thing as he, as he had prepared for. So once again, going through the physical motions to draw forth energy and then prepare to blast as soon as he can see it. Uh, background, it's turn. As it will indeed, somewhat mindlessly, and with this weird sort of cackle glub of, of, of eagerness, start moving in. And I think once it gets to there... Yeah, once it gets to the square here. He's fucked. <laughs> um, there will be a bunch of things that happen. Uh, I believe, yeah, you had a higher Splatter. initiative than uh, Dudex, so go ahead, Annie, first of all. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, short bow. Eh, that's kind of shit. Uh, that is a miss. Um, give me two seconds. I just wanted to check something. Did you have advantage? Uh, you are still hidden. Okay. Actually. I will take that. Oh, and I that's plus one. Sorry, my bad. 
I don't know why I still have the regular short bow there. That's much better. That 21. Is, indeed. Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, this is uh, with Azamanta's bow. Oh, nice. Uh, so, so that's a whole 19. Lot. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, the arrow pierces deeply into it. It hisses at the uh, at the effect. Uh, let's see. This goes off. Uh, this is a ranged spell attack. I suppose that'll actually work. No. All right. Um, as oh, that's a successful roll. As uh, a beam of white light with little little um, uh, dots of of frost floating off of it as the ray of frost is released and hits, uh, doing at his level. Oh, yeah. Oof. Twelve points mm. of cold damage. It is not looking great at the moment. And then Silas, you had a held action with a shillelagh, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a basic uh, attack with it. <laughs> 21 to hit. 21 definitely hits. Uh, just, uh, let's see. Uh, it's not a critical, so it's just the uh, 8 bludgeoning damage. All right. And as you... Uh, Uh, as you stand over and whack the thing, uh, it kind of looks at you and all of its eyes kind of fixate on you for a second. And it starts to cackle and laugh uh, as the shillelagh kind of sinks in through its central eyeball. Uh, and then it kind of seems to uh, cackle and laugh as the, the rest of it seems to deflate. And then explode. Let's see. Uh, so everybody except Annie, <laughs> please make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, Medric automatically fails. Please say it's fire. <laughs> Eight. Eight is not enough. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. It's only the two of you plus. <laughs> I was like, why am I not? Okay. Sorry, folks. It's been a little while, and there's a lot of moving parts suddenly. I remember these. Uh, okay. So, um, Dudek succeeds, uh, and. Uh, Silas fails, Medric fails. So Silas and Medric take 13 force damage. Oh man, that's not fire. As it explodes. And Dudek only takes. Um, oh, whoops. Wrong button. Dudek only takes uh, six. As the thing explodes, sending bits and chunks of this weird, gooey, greenish flesh everywhere. Eyeballs and stalks and more all um, just cover the room right up to and just about onto Annie's shoe, but not quite. Silas and, looks over. It slimed me, Ray. <laughs> um, now, you don't know what heard what, or anything more. Medric, you're still paralyzed. Do I get a con save again? <laughs> uh, you will. Every six seconds. Yeah. So if you want to take one right now, because you're basically the next one initiative. 14. Um, 14. Uh, that's success. So hey. you feel your limbs start to come back to you just as you're covered in slime. Gross. <laughs> So, what do you do? 
I wipe the slime off my armor for a few seconds at least. Yeah. Dudek is also similarly sort of he's he's scraping the, the slime off and also you see him weirdly grinning. That was exhilarating. I I that was interesting. That was painful. <laughs> uh Silas is just gonna stand in the hallway while he prestidigitates the goo off him. So if we see another one of these, we're killing it immediately. It was probably just a sentry or something. I, I thought it might have been sentient, maybe reason with it. Well, some it's of the a... words it was mentioning were from multiple languages. So I think it was intelligent, just not all that bright. Wait, he was actually speaking a language? The bits and pieces, not one language, almost like, um, well, suppose you took a whole Word bunch of salad. books. Yes. Or you Word took a whole salad. bunch of books, books together, ripped the pages up, and threw them into a pile, and randomly pulled out words and letters. That's what it sounded like to me, anyway. It was a, a syllable in Dwarven, and a, another one in some sort of other chaotic language you couldn't quite make out. Thinking back, did I remember anything like in Orkish? Um, thinking, ba think, thinking back, you know, you could interpret a couple of syllables as Orkish. Um, but it kept, okay. it, you know, when you think about it, it the explanation that Dudek gives kind of makes sense as if it was changing languages and almost mid thought as well as mid, mid sentence and never very clearly enunciating either. He, he, the fact that he heard that was kind of remarkable. Okay. This may mean that Tauzek Riva knows we're here. Wait, are those like linked, like uh, mindlessly or psychically? Or I don't know, but it's possible. I mean, it's a big eye creature on sentry duty. Or he but may Tauzek just. Tauzek, we could reason with. The... He does. He forgives have... us for blowing up his haunted house. Mm. Well, we didn't blow up his haunted house. That was something else happening there. That wasn't us. That was possibly him. But he's probably going to blame us for it. Let's be realistic. Mm. Well, we're here for some reason. So if it involves him, he's... I mean, he was there when Catherine disappeared. So yeah, he may be involved in this. Exactly. Onward. Slowly. Onward, yes. Uh, okay, I'm going to be moving. So Silas here. can go first from now on. <laughs> <laughs> um, stepping into that room and I'll, I'll move. Okay, that was 10 feet, 20. Five. Do I see anything to down this one to the right of us? Um, first of all, let me describe what the room is when you come in. Yep. So once more, there's sort of these vaulted 15-foot ceilings. Much more evidence of uh, construction going on in this space. The walls now are filled with uh, different uh, runic carvings. Some of them seem to be um, spell-like runes. Uh, but there's no active energy that you can see around you. Um, there is on the northern wall what looks like a boxish opening that leads to this um, this uh, carved uh, trough that runs through the floor. Nothing in the trough at the moment, but there are are again more symbols of magical nature around that. Um, in the lower, or sorry, kind of in the mid right hand side, so the 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 block just as you come inside, right about here, there is a um, broken set of stone blocks that um, resemble, in some ways, a stone ladder. And as you look and you can see it going up to the ceiling, you can see this this large, uh, what looks like a like a trap door from the underside. But you can also see that it's it seems to be no hinges on this side. It must hinge on the other side. But it's a large uh, rectangular block um, that seems 
to be up, you can push it upward, um, made of the same stone as everything else around you. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, so that's primarily what you see from there. Um, down in the lower left-hand side, you see what looks like the remains of stone walls that kind of turned it into several cubby holes um, down along this area and a larger one right there. It looks like there were um, places for um, something to be hung over the top of the walls, the small chambers. Um, in a weird way, I'm trying to think from your background, um, there's not a lot that really is relevant, but the way I'll describe them is they almost look like separate stalls that are there in which some sort of shower head almost can be uh, put over top of them. Um, you don't see anything, let's see, do you see anything down the hallway? You don't see anything from the hallway that it came through, and you notice a, 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 the opening to your right is more stalls like they're on the left as well. But all of them seem to have been broken. They're all made of stone, and there are signs of having been um, exploded almost. Forceful energy has been used to destroy the space. And you said there was a stone that could be lifted here? Now, in the ceiling, there is what looks like the bottom side of a trap door. Okay. And the ceiling is 15 feet high. Yes. And the stone ladder that was there has been has been collapsed. Um, Dudek comes in and kind of looks around with an appraising eye and then goes closer to the uh, opening where that squarish opening um, leads into the trough. Anything interesting? Well, I, I need some time to interpret this, but... Uh, well, there are symbols here uh, that seem to suggest water. I, I suppose this might be a, a water pipe? Some sort of magical water pipe, I think? He starts pointing. And there's something missing. It's, the natural stone's been formed. Uh, and I say formed probably by magical means rather than by sheer... Uh, force of chisel and hammer um, but it's been formed into this this uh, shape um, and unless I miss my guess it's almost like a small portal uh, it's only a, a few inches um, in diameter but up here over the top is missing something almost as though it held a, a gem or something above it Maybe one of those uh, Nexus crystals, I suppose, was powering this. Possibly. It, it draws water from another dimension? What? Well, I mean, it's a, a cursory examination, but if I were to make a hazard a guess, I, I'd say yes. Uh, wherever this is, they were able to bring water from, well, if, if this is to be taken at face value... Uh, from the very plane of water itself, the very existence of water, as opposed to from the natural world. Well, that, that's practical. <laughs> there are a lot of stories of different, um, different plans to build outposts by the Argenti Sagax. Um, they'd hinted at some of these constructions, but there were no details. Um, almost as though they were remote reports or just dreams of them doing something. But I would imagine that they actually did succeed. So maybe there's a member of the Argent de Sygax here instead of just Moth. Or here's hoping, anyway. Uh, should I try to open that stone up there? I think I can get to it. Who are you asking in particular? The group. <laughs> I mean, if you have an easy way to do it, go for it. I can't reach. As tall as I am, the ceiling is taller. 
Okay. Same. I'm trusting your judgment on this stuff. Yeah. Oh, Do I'm just waiting. Are we sure we want that open? Because, I mean, I wouldn't mind checking it, but uh, uh, he'll pop one, he'll walk over to where Medrick is because he has to be right under it. And he'll pop one of the floating candies and uh, levitate up. Okay. Um, if yeah, you need you... me to push on your feet to give you leverage, let me know. I don't think either of us is tall enough for that. <laughs> no, but like you, you're stacked on top of me. Would be tall enough. Well, it's about well, 15, 15 foot feet. Ceilings. Yeah. Well, well, Medrick is, can, is six foot six. Yeah, and if he's lifting up, yeah, fuck. Maybe, yeah, I might just be able to reach, but um yeah anyways i'll see if i can do it just from the the floating or if i end up pushing myself back down okay um i'll give you, him guidance <laughs> when you push just against the stone itself unfortunately the levitation doesn't have anything to push back against it's enough to lift you but not you and load um so you're just kind of pushing yourself back every time you push against the ceiling it does feel sturdy as well and you actually as you get closer notice that there are carved in handholds to be able to shove on so it's it's meant to be pushed at all right so uh, silas hold on I'll, I'll i'll hold my hammer upwards so you put your feet on my hammer and i'll push you up well from the handholds does it look like it slides sideways or pushes up um there's there'd be no way for it to slide sideways Okay. It's 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 flush with the ceiling. Yeah. I will attempt to stand on the hammer and give her a shove. Okay. <gasps> let's have let's have uh Medric make a uh athletics roll. That's a tw twenty one. That was my first good okay. roll of the day. Sweet. So that'll give advantage for Silas as you both are kind of pushing. If you had if you had uh Who also has guidance. If, yep. if sure. If you had failed the roll it would have been a straight roll. If you'd botched the roll, it would have been uh, uh, a disadvantage. But as it is an advantage. I don't think guidance is enough to help there. Um, oh, no. What did you get? 19 plus 3? That's pretty no, good. No, that's a 6 plus. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's advantage. advantage. Right. Never mind. 22. That's fine. So, yeah, 22. Um, it is heavy. Um, and as you're kind of shoving on it, there's little bits of dust around the edges which are falling. Uh, indicating probably that it, it hadn't moved for a while and it was starting to settle. Uh, but you are able to actually push it up um, very, very slowly. And you get the sense as it starts to move up that the the, the width of this, or depth, I guess, really, um, is about six inches of solid stone. Um, it's apparently built to be cantilevered, though, because you could not, on your own, probably have moved this. Uh, but between the two of you, um, you are able to, to, to heave it up. Dust flies in through the, the hole as it gets opened, and a very wan yellow light uh, is, is visible first through the crack. How far are you opening it? All the way? Uh, yeah. If I was close to it, I'd try to peek through first, but I don't think I can get that close, so just push it up. Okay. Um, it does kind of slowly and catch about 90 degrees and kind of hold there. From here, you can see up above um, through the hole, again, this sort of wane yellow light, a very faint, uh, almost taun uh, tawny or tan-like light that blows through. It also immediately grows a lot drier. Um, and in fact, you kind of feel your, your, your lips almost uh, dry up and cake over. Um, and there's a little bit of a... Of a Sort of a breeze, but really just dust flowing almost on its own that comes in through the hole. Um, from And you still have the levitate up, so you can kind of float up to mm -hmm. take a look. Uh, yep. And you see that um, for about a kilometer in any direction, uh, it is just a flat plain of rock. Gray and brown and little speckles of red from time to time. And then... Uh, Immediately after that, massive mountains that seem to climb almost to threaten the sky. In the sky overhead, you can see what looks like a, uh, a, a tawny moon, which is the only source of light. And it seems to have a peculiar face on it, not entirely similar to the two moons you're familiar with, uh, Marius and Marina. If anything, it resembles Marina a little bit more, um, but you can see there's sort of some details on the face of it that for 
a brief second, it comes into focus, and it almost feels like it is a hammer and chisel on the face of the moon. Weird. Um, I think I found the surface, guys. Uh, it's all rock up here. Some mountains, the ways off, and a moon. I'm going to just stare at the moon and try to memorize it, and then uh, I'll replay it down below with the uh, with silent image. Okay. Uh, do I see anything other than just flat land and mountains and a moon? Um, yes. You hear it before you see it. A low rumble that seems to uh, begin somewhere in the mountains and then cascade down in a strange manner. You've seen rocks fall before, but these rocks seem to move more like a flock of birds than a, than a rock slide, moving in patterns and moving down the side of the rocks and then coming down onto the flat and not slowing down when they reach there, but in fact breaking off into smaller uh, groups uh, and flowing in this particular direction. Closing the door. <laughs> I reach up and try to to hook my feet under the thing and uh, pull with my arms. Okay, kind of upside down. Um, and you're able to kind of, it, it is slow to move down. It feels like it's, it's also cantilevered in both directions. Um, but you can hear the rumble of this, this, uh, this crowd of rocks coming closer. And then finally the, the door closes with a bit of a thump. Uh, and you can you actually feel with your feet still touching the, the stone, um, the, the, the rolling, um, rocks moving on like a herd of buffalo floating across the, the roof, uh, shaking it more dust kind of settles around the outside. After a few what minutes, it stops, or a few seconds, it stops, as if it was just an on the pathway. Uh, so let's <laughs> say, um, uh, there's lots of floating rocks that just came down and rumbled over the area. Maybe they're elementals? I don't know. It's weird. Um, probably nothing to do with what we need, though. Remarkable. He'll float back down to the ground. It's rather remarkable. Well, I think my initial proposal might be correct. This may, in fact, be a plane of pure elemental rock. It seems very rocky and earthy. This That's might definitely be, not the plane of fire. This might be where Graveler came from. Hey, maybe. Well, indeed. Or a whole manner of other creatures and beings and magical capabilities. Ah... I really must find my way back here. This is quite remarkable. And if that's what I think it is, then, um, this may very well have been one of the the basis of operation of the Argenti Segex. The symbols tended to suggest that already, but um, rather remarkable. I wonder how long it's remained dormant. Ah, the amount of research they would have been able to do, the things that they could know, so much of it lost. Well, Maybe it's just hidden somewhere. We should probably proceed, though. Yeah. Who knows how long we've got here. Uh, yeah, the I think the candies only last a minute, so a little while later he fully solidifies in the ground and he'll just start heading down the side passage. I'm going to follow Silas. Yep, same. Right. Silas sees a ghost. Uh, well, indeed, as you move towards that area, let's make, get everything up to date here. Um, as you move towards that area, I have too many mice, sorry. Uh, you see uh, what looks like uh, an elven body slumped down across the, the floor. Um, very, very, very dead. Skin remarkably still preserved, 
but so- sallow and gray and covered in dust. Uh, the, uh, the body is wearing uh, what looks like a, a, a beautiful robe. Um, you can see that whatever armor they were wearing was crudely cut off, though, and you can still see some of the leather straps where it may have been held there. The straps themselves preserved and dried, but even crumbly to the touch. Um, it looks as though they were crushed, almost. Um, pummeled to death. Uh, yeah. Silas is not quite sure what to do, but he'll kind of pull around this corner just to check the room. The rest of the room is composed of of wooden benches, racks, um, some very uh, solid and heavy-looking tools. Um, The racks probably held weapons and uh, uh, other metal items as well as a little bit of wood, perhaps. You can see there's some chisels that would be more appropriate to wood. Um, Very heavy hammers. Um, It looks as though it's some sort of repair shop, maybe. Um, there hmm. are sort of scattering of parts here, but nothing particularly put together. Dudek goes over to the fallen elf and kind of examines him closely. Looks like he was one of the, uh, well, I mean, th- there's no markings left. There's no symbols. It was thoroughly... Thoroughly erased in a certain sense. Hmm. No tattoos? Well, I could take a closer look if we've got time. Hmm. Silas looks over at Annie. I mean, I don't want to stay here longer than we have to. Yeah. And at that I thought, wonder if everybody make we... a constitution saving throw, please. Shit. Is it magic? 13. That is not magic. Oof. One. All right. And two decks is... Yep. Uh... Ooh. Um... So... Uh, yeah. Um, so Dudek and Silas, um, both your, your throats catch a little bit. Um, for the other two, you find yourself moistening your lips as the dryness starts to get to you. Um, that's, uh, four points of, um, what would be the appropriate kind of damage in this case? Dehumidify damage. I guess necrotic, yeah, you're kind of being, you're arcane to be mummified. For uh, Medric and Annie, you only take two. No. Nope. Sort, of, sort of start to realize that your lips are chapped a little bit. Um, start to realize that, that it's just, it's just in- intensely dry. There is no water here. And it feels like whatever water you have is being contributed to the entirety of the place. Okay, yeah, we gotta go. Still, I would like to return. Uh, Silas, actually, I, I could try to speak to him if we have if we got time. I don't know this. I mean, even with the cubes, we're starting. I like to get breathing. Uh, Silas is gonna take a drink of water from his flask. Uh, is that how how quickly can you cast that? Uh, let me loading. You recover two yeah. do points, two hit points from your flask. Oh, okay. Take a drink of water; it can help. Oh, nice. Thank you. No, your water. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> I will not. I'll save that for later. <laughs> 
Um, Dudek takes a sip of something that may or may not be water. From a small flask. Okay, it takes one action to cast. And it's a level three spell. Okay. So uh, do we have any questions for it? If so, prepare them. I've got a thousand questions, but perhaps yours are more relevant than mine. Uh, it has. To, does it have to be yes or no questions? Uh, no. No, that one, it can be anything. It just has to be willing to answer us. This is uh, Speak with Dead? Yeah. Silas will... Does he still have a mouth? Yes. In fact, his skin is remarkably preserved. Just kind si of hollow. Silas will look at Dudek and say, I would suggest... Uh, are you a member of Argenti Sagax? And what killed you? All right. Well, I, I think we can make well, a like presumption on the membership. So, so the spell lasts me. for 10 minutes, and you can ask it whatever you want. All right, I'll cast it. Yeah, uh, I think well, we only have five, five questions. questions. Okay. Oh, five. Okay. Um, uh, but uh, Dudek will turn to you and, and say, uh, um, I, I think we can presume the Argenti Sagex part, but perhaps his name, so I can refer to the, re the records when I get back. The name, definitely. I mean, I don't know if we can presume anything, uh, but... Uh, now this, we just uh, showed up here that it could be anyone. It's true. Um, the spell does require you to burn some incense, so there's a, a bit of a, of a smoky additional yeah. vibe going on at the moment. So you light up some incense. Mm -hmm. Cast your spell. You get 10 minutes. And there is sort of a a raspy cough is the first indication of any sort of response from deep within the, the belly of this person uh, kind of comes this, this raspy cough and a bit of, of very fine stone dust gets pushed out uh, from the mouth and then it takes a, a, an inhale. The eyes flicker open and you can see that they are shrunken inside of the, or sorry, you can see one of them is sh sh uh, shrunken inside the socket as though it has been slowly or perhaps quickly losing water. The other eye opens, but there is no uh, eyeball inside. And you realize it looks like it has been torn out. Well, Hello. What is this? You died. We don't know when, but we need your help with answers. And I'll direct, I'll uh, just kind of open the floor for uh, Dudek and Silas to ask questions. <laughs> well, Silas will look at Dudek and, and ask, what is your name? And the, the creature's eye kind of flickers back and forth, but not in a quick way. It's almost that, that painful, um, gritty move that um, you might expect from stone turning on stone. It sort of flickers and then shivers and moves inaccurately to look over at you. And I have to scroll. I am, or was, Edirum Venris. Do you recognize that name, Dudek? Uh, well, not specifically, but there were dozens of members, so it would mm. be on the rolls if I have a chance to consult with them. Uh, are you a member of Argenti Sygax? And there's a, there's a shift in the body at that point. Very sm small. The body does not have full animation. But yeah, it's and just in case, Silas will hold up the ring. Okay. Um, and the eye will kind of catch on that for a moment. Um, but the shift is generally almost squaring of the shoulders. Um, it's minor and it's, it's futile. And yet there's almost a necessity to do that. Uh, and the chin raises ever so slightly. I am with some pride held in that 
that dusty voice. Well, that confirms it, then. Hmm. What is this place? And it seems the, to be the plane of Earth, according to Dudek. But... And the, again, kind of the, the head shifting over jerkily to, to peer with its one eye towards you. It is a, an outpost, a base of operations for research and for exploration and a respite. Uh, what killed you? And again, the shifting head kind of goes back to you, but the eye is wider now. Um, the realization settling in that that they're dead. Perhaps up to this point they hadn't quite realized it or or that part of the memory had been obscured. But the eye goes To be wide. fair, I did say, like, you, you died when I first raised it. <laughs> Still, when you're confronted okay. with it like this, though, there's sort of a difference. There was a battle. Many came. Traitors, even. We were taken by surprise. There was so many wearing white and one wearing a dark gray. He commanded the elements. Anyone got a good fifth question? I'm still writing stuff down, loading. And he's kind of looking around. There is 10 minutes to this potentially, and you don't yeah. seem to be interrupted. Off in the distance, every once in a while, you hear uh, the sound of a rock tumbling, and it seems to echo quite a bit. Um, there is, at one point, a tense moment when you hear some of that similar grumbling sound to what you'd heard from that thing that you create that you killed before, but it doesn't seem to get that close. Silence so will say, maybe ask well, what a bunch was. of people, a bunch of people wearing white and one person wearing gray. I mean, Tassar was wearing white. It, Dudek, is that a common color for the Argenti Sagax? No, not at all. Blue and silver were typically their colors. Some white, yes, but not primarily. Not in all white at all. Mm. Um, no, Tass are, well, to me, as much more the resemblance of an Amazonian than uh, anything of Argentis Sagax. Then could this be that they were attacked by Namazanians? I find it hard to believe. They are private and helpful, but generally not a militant people. Mm. Uh, their belief is well, hard to penetrate, to be honest. I have yet to get a straight answer from any of the Nemezanians I've talked to. Hmm. Maybe ask him like, what year it was when he died. Would that be a good question? Or... Yeah. We don't know what what amount of time was lost, though. Yeah. Hmm. I, well, I mean, this is another realm completely. Maybe he'd know how long it's been, if not a specific year. Well, the, the difficulty for many of the extraplanar travelers was actually determining any sort of date reference. Uh, the mm. difficulty being is that there's no seasons in many of these places, and time sometimes moves differently. Mm. Even backwards sometimes. Maybe we should ask him about Catheron. It's a long shot, but yeah. there's a chance. Uh... I mean, if we, we ask something like that, we, that's our last question. We can't yeah. elaborate on it. Yeah, it would have to be something that's... Um... Uh... Plus, I mean, 
Cathron wouldn't have physically fit in this area. So I don't think this person could have seen them directly. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, all they can say is what they saw around them. I mean, we could try to ask what was erased, but the chances of getting an answer for that aren't great either. Yeah. Mm. We could ask why there were tra traitors. Yes, because this does suggest that the Argenti Sagax was attacking itself. Um, yeah, ask who, who the traitors were, maybe. Uh, I think why would be a better... Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of formulate it. Maybe we can ask for what reason they were traitors. That might give us a usable answer. Okay. So what's the question? Um, why were there traitors? Er, hmm, sorry. You mentioned traitors attacking in the raid. Why were they traitors? Because they were striking down the brethren of the order. They had turned against us to fight with these others. I still do not know why. And then with that, the face Thank kind you. of sags a little bit. The eye closes. And then the skin you. perhaps gets a little bit even more hollow than before. Hmm. Well, that's something to think about. Um, but we need to get moving. Yeah, now we just have to find out who these others were. Silas will just peek around the corner. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, we'll um, and as you kind of move, you see once more another uh, another body seems to be there. You also see um, a considerable amount of greenish glow coming from uh, far off. Uh, we'll mention a couple of things. First of all. Um, as I mentioned, that previous room did have benches and tools on them uh, and raw materials. Right where the eyeball is, is the beginning of another trough. And once more, mm. you can see that there are uh, symbols surrounding the trough. Um, if anybody takes a closer look, you'll find out more. Um, but there is a body that seems to be um, in uh, that area. This room in general, sorry to get getting jumping around i'm starting to get dry in the mouth too which is even more hilarious <laughs> as i describe this place um you see the, it's the full role-playing immersion experience i'm getting way too you know method uh you see along that back wall um what actually appears to be um an ancient chalkboard or blackboard um, and you can see the very very faintest remnant of dust of descriptions there symbols drawings diagrams uh, most of it even just breathing near it starts to lift off the, the faint remains of whatever chalk there was. But you see kind of a, a teaching area um, where across uh, this, the rest of the room there were benches of stone and a few chairs that were lined up. Um, could accommodate, looks like almost, uh, you know, maybe 10 people, although a little crowded at 10 people. And once more, there is a trough that runs through the floor, this time in towards the center, which you can see is, is uh, uh, the floor, or sorry, the troughs kind of merge at a couple of places. And you can see that there's an edge of, of darkness around the, uh, the, uh, the edges of those, uh, or sorry, beyond the edges. So on the other side of the gaps and stone walls that you see. 
Um, you can also kind of hear um, creatures um, muttering a little bit, almost magical incantations, like a longer ritual. Um, and you can even make out, I think, one of them from where you are, uh, as there is a greenish glow generally in the area um, coming from an indeterminate spot somewhere up ahead. Oops, there we go. Um, the creature seems hunched over like a shortish human being, um, but kind of green and almost scaly skin. Thin uh, arms and legs that seem to be uh, ending in the hands, at least, in three or four fingered uh, claw-like uh, hands. Um, but moving kind of uh, swaying a little bit with the, the rhythm of the sound that they're creating. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can also make out the sound of a familiar voice um, kind of calling out to them. Maintain that for a while, will you? Sorry, I'm breaking into that same voice that I've been using way too much lately. <laughs> uh, I've got to smile more because Tauzek Riva always has a smile on his face. Uh, as you hear him speaking, good, good, make sure it works this time. I don't want to have another incident where one of you gets destroyed. You're not irreplaceable, but it is a bother on my time. Um, just moving a few other things in the backdrop. Uh, okay, yes. So that's what you see and hear as you come around that corner. You're much, much closer to the center part of this, you might think. Um, but still not yet detected. Uh, Silas is going to turn on his magic vision for a bit and just look around. Detect know. magic? Yep. Okay. Um, the body that's there, um, you can kind of make out from the tusks that remain. It was probably a half-orc. Uh, and you're detecting a little bit of magic around the body, um, seeming to be poked through uh, with the remains of what of the clothing that was there. Um, yeah, which so is mostly work. mostly tattered at this point. I could ask him questions too if if we want that. Yeah, Silas is talking quietly. Uh, Me too. Uh, yeah. so is Maybe. I think we got all the information that we really would. Probably. Uh, let's see. There is a, uh, on the table next to him, you can see that there's actually kind of half buried in rubble um, what looks like a lantern, which is growing, glowing with uh, divination magic. And on is it him, glowing with actual light or just magic? It is not. Magically. Just okay. magically. So it was easy to miss in the darkness that's here. Um, and you have a feeling that while obscured by his clothing, there's something magical beneath it. Um, in the center, as it kind of, if you glance over towards the center, you can definitely get an aura of magic in that entire area. Um, it's a mixture of kinds of magic, and it's sort of yeah. actively swirling about. Okay. Um... Oh, and you do detect magic from the opening uh, around where the... Uh, the trough is, the opening in the wall, it's mm. sort of dormant magic. Uh, and it is definitely... Oh, I always forget the kinds of magic. It's terrible. Um, conjuration? Me, probably. Yeah, I think conjuration would be the rest word. Yeah, yeah. Um, Silas is going to whisper back to Dudek and say that he thinks the water... or I think the water generator at in the trough at that wall might still work if maybe you can take a look at it uh meantime he's going to try and feel around under the body of the orc for whatever might be there he'll try to be quiet but he's not good at that as you're kind of doing things in here i will ask for stealth rolls is there anything in particular that medrick or annie are doing I'm just really keeping uh, an ear out 
slash an eye out for, for stuff. Um, I think I'll move. I do want to inspect the half orc's body, though. Okay. Um, oh, I got to point D. To nice. here. I'll oh, just look I'll... on as Silas, as Silas inspects. Do you mind moving like here, Medric? I was about to go use that that corner as a place to hide and keep an I, eye I, out. I moved him, so yes. Oh, there. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just getting proprietary because it's like, well, I'll just move these people <laughs> out. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna hide in this corner here. Um so and try to keep an ear out because where we're hearing from this direction, right? The that, the voices. That's correct. The same direction. Yeah. You should see a little green glow coming from that area. Dude, I got a 13 on his stealth. Uh, stealth from uh, Medric and Annie, please. Poo, 25. Ooh. So lowest 11. 11 and 13 from uh, from Dudek. Okay. Uh, where are you, buddy? Where are you? Oh, okay, there it goes. Okay. Um, you hear half of a conversation. <laughs> uh, definitely Riva kind of responding, but you don't hear the questions or comments he's responding to. Uh, well, then go check it out. Um, as he seems to sound like he's moving closer and closer to the center. I'm pretty uh, sure it means us. Yeah. Well, let's see if what Duda can do. As he's Incoming. I'm going to hold a bow shot for if something okay. comes in a in a threatening manner. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, the two of you are rifling the body. Yeah, I'm going for the glowing thing. Okay. Um, I'll have you, uh, you can make an investigation roll with advantage. Medric, what are you doing with the body? What are you trying to do? I'm just trying to see, like, to get any clues from, like, well, I was hoping to speak to it, but it's probably going to take too long, especially because there's bad guys right next to us or in the next room. It does feel like a dangerous spot. Yeah. I'll just see if I can notice anything on the body that, like, Silas might miss. Like, anything orc-specific. Okay. Um, just make it a simple perception check, then. Perception. I know this is, like, above zero. I got a 10 with advantage. Oh, dear. 8 with a plus oh, 5. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear, guys. I guess that the voices are giving me anxiety. And I just can't <laughs> pay attention properly. Why the fuck is it snowing? Dang it. I can't find that glowing thing that's right in front of me. It's more like in the in a, in a two or three seconds, can you rifle the body mm -hmm. for the thing you're thinking about? Yeah. Um, it's in his pocket. There's a zipper. You got it under the zipper. Okay. What's the a zipper? I don't know. Did zippers even, even exist back then? They're fairly modern, actually. Yeah. Although a little older than I expected, I think. Um, That's in the probably one of my favorite jokes in Galavant. <laughs> what? Oh, that that there should be something like for pants that you can zip out down and then zip up and not have to like deal with laces and shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, because you have the the the, the vision on. I will say that you can see something that's strapped around the orcs, the half orcs' neck. Uh, it looks like a thin band uh, made of um, made of leather, which, given the state of all the other leather, this one does not crumble under your fingers, which gives you uh, reason to believe that it's magically preserved. That and it's glowing slightly um, yeah. with uh, uh, transmutation magic. Um. Medric, you you kind of are are poking and prodding, and um, your 
you notice first of all that the the tusks are sharpened. Um, okay. what, it isn't just the the regular uh, half orc tusks. This one was specifically sharpened. A lot of half orcs actually uh, will will carve down their teeth a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, this was definitely and for you this this suggests a much older custom. Okay. Um, and something that he maintained. That's all you're going to get for an eight. I'm sorry. Um, no worries. So this body is ancient, is what you're saying? It, it, yes. Yeah. I'll mention that to Silas. Um, very, in, in, like in a very like whispery, quiet voice. Yeah, I think he's wearing an ancient dog collar for some reason. What? This leather thing, it's magic. That it's a magic collar, not a dog collar. Jeez. Well, it could be a magic dog collar. I'm but not going to be on a dog. I'm not going to king shame him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dudek is tinkering with the uh, the device. Uh, the stealth check was. Oh, yeah, that was awful. Um, so he's kind of pulled out a few tools and seems to be kind of carving a little bit at the. Um, at the runes that are about it, kind of cleaning and straightening them as if to reinforce the magic. <laughs> it seems to be squeak, squeak, tink, kind tink, of, tink. yeah, squeak. yeah, kind of a little bit like that. It wasn't quite that bad a roll, but it's it's definitely not paying much attention. And is 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 more of uh, a squeak, and then everybody freezes. <laughs> kind of, oopsies. Yeah. Um, as you see coming into view now, let's see, five, ten. Um, you probably can start to make out a little bit of that greenish glow coming towards you from the south. Should we leave? We should probably leave. Um, and you can hear the accompanying sort of rumble of voices. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And having those been, fucking things again. been pointed out by uh, by Dudek, each of you that know different languages are picking out like half a word uh, in one language, and then it turns to another language. Um, I if you if you want to listen to it, you can take a moment to do so, uh, or you can take an action right now. Uh, Silas is going to cast tongues out of the staff and see if he can understand what it's saying. Oh wow! Okay, yep. <laughs> I will stand defensively. As he tries to undo the thing on the guy's thing. Yeah, I hate clasps. Um, well, tongues will be the action. Yeah. Um, you can kind of choose one of those two things to do. Yeah, it'll be tongues. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, are, what are the rest of you doing? In that instant, standing defensively. Um, I am going to. You, you two can take care of yourself. I'm going to run to here. Uh, I'm going to hide behind that little ledge there, and hold a um, a bow shot. Okay. Basically, once if they seem to have seen us, if our cover is blown, basically, then then I'll shoot. Okay. Uh, um, I keep forgetting about tongues. I got to remember that spell because it, it's kind of like, oh wait, I got to explain all the weird shit that he's saying. Uh, right. It's it's listen and speak, not yep. right. No, but you're you're gonna you're gonna hear him. Twenty nine mm-hmm. stealth. Yes, of course. Oof. Um, geez, just short of 30. Too bad. Um, it was so close, but you know, you didn't get 30. So close. Um, what happens at three? Well, she would have succeeded at 30. <laughs> I'm not saying she doesn't succeed at 29, but you know, 30 pretty much solidifies it. Yeah. Uh, it's the, it's the, anything beyond here is technically impossible. Um, kind of, kind of <laughs> level. Uh, okay, so the muttering clear, clears up for uh, Silas. It's still weird because you're kind of hearing it spoken and you're understanding the literal meaning of the words, but even then, it is as though the voice speaking them changes every few seconds. 
um, as though it is not one person speaking, but in fact, a chorus of people speaking. Actually, not a chorus. Chorus is all together. It is a cacophony of everybody kind of taking over for each other. So it's still kind of disorienting. Um, but it seems to be, uh, let me see, how do I want to phrase this? Um, it is partially a litany of complaints about, you know, having to do this menial work. I'm so much better than this. Uh, <laughs> but it's also an argument with itself where it also answers saying, if you were better than this, you wouldn't be doing this work. Uh, there is uh, a sort of comment of, if only we can find our other I, we could be free. And then a response to that, there is no other I beyond, oh shoot, I got to guess the name here, Oculon. Uh, so it's a kind of argument among itself. Then there's a, a, a sort of dribble in of um, sort of left, forward, right, right, turn. Forward, 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 left, left. And you realize it's describing the route it's going to take as it would go up the same place where you came from. And all up, of up. this is, sorry, uh, up, up, down, down, left, right, left. I was, I was, yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> it's the Konami code, uh, but it, it, all of these conversations are interleaved, so it takes you a moment to kind of, you hear it all, and then it's like, oh wait, uh, and kind of like what dude I could describe before. You take a bunch of books, you tear them to shreds, and you pick up any random collection of shreds. Um, and it's just kind of a bit overwhelming. Um, I will say, make a wisdom saving throw. Because you can actually hear its babble now. Thirteen. Two of them. That's just like ADHD thoughts in my mind, though. Like, seriously. It, it is kind <laughs> of. But when it's all flowing in suddenly to you, before it kind of flowed over you, um, you do find yourself stunned for one round. Because yeah. you're just kind of trying to pick up this this thing that's happening. Um, Dudek's not even paying attention. Dudek is paying attention to the wall. He doesn't even notice uh, that Annie is there. Nobody knows. What's he finding out about the wall, there. though? Uh, it's hard to say. He hasn't really been vocal about it. He's kind of working at it still. He did not roll very well in that particular roll. Um, and this thing moves forward a little bit more. And now, just on the edge of your vision, um, you can zero in both from the light and from the voice, especially uh, Silas. You see another one of those strange creatures. Um, it does not seem to notice anybody yet. And I think also that uh, just inside the range of sight, probably for Medric as well. Not quite around the corner, but you can see the glow starting around the corner, Annie. I do see it. Um, I It has not yet engaged with us. I'm not going to be the one breaking the stealth. Okay. I'm still standing defensively, giving it the stink eye with two eyes to one. Or wait, no, he's, uh, he has more than one eye. Kind of. It moves kind of forward a little bit. You can see it just kind of making that out. It's kind of turning back and forth to, uh, where's my, uh, kind of looking back and forth. Um, and at that moment, you hear a nasty magical explosion from somewhere beyond. Somewhere in this area, if you can kind of make it out. I don't know if you can see that from there. Uh, and that green light that was in the center goes away. Darkening the center. And a loud shout from, uh, from Tao. Damn it, I thought it would really hold this time. The attention of the creature seems to be diverted as it moves and kind of sort of floats away from you back towards the center. Um, and it's quickly lost behind the stones. Let me 
one more roll from Dudek to see if he can do anything here. Okay, that's not a two. Um, the magic is intact, but I'm going to need a power source of some kind. Um, oh, yes, this, of course. And Annie, you're close enough to kind of hear him mumbling to himself um, as he reaches towards his neck, pulls on the necklace that he was given from Tassar, takes the little crystal out of the box and puts Go it kick into him. the... The the moment I notice that he's pulled it off, I, I tell him, don't do that. I'm sure That's it's your way work. back. That's your way back. I don't care about getting water here. That's your way back to our our dimension. Oh, this one isn't water. I think it's fire. Okay, fire? same thing. That's not the concern right now. And I will have you both make stealth rolls again because a rather heated conversation, even in whispers. Um, you'll still you'll have advantage, Annie, because you are. I don't think you need it, but. Uh, <laughs> but I will not give advantage to Dudek because he's just a screaming academic. That's a natural one. <laughs> Oof. So his voice goes to normal voice levels. He's like, no, I, I really think this can work. I'm not exactly sure of the purposes of these, but clearly they are meant to empower this place. Um, and then you just hear off in the distance a sort of laugh. Oh, what do we have here? Visitors, yeah, I think. As you hear Tau Zekriva from in the middle somewhere uh, kind of gleefully laugh. Now, um, this may or may not be a combat. It is already 5 o'clock. <laughs> Whatever this might be uh, is going to be uh, a little bit longer than we have time for today. But, uh, I was going to say any last words. Uh, are there any immediate things that people would like to do? And this may, you could, I mean, you potentially could deflate the situation depending on what you try to do i'm, I'm probably gonna like not no longer stand defensive because i mean we, we know tau's like maybe like he can be reasoned with unlike those other like i lasting bastards okay. and i mean tau's like and uh dude like bitterhorn were like colleagues in the same circus so surely the conversation could go well right all right well remember that <laughs> Tau, tau must... zek was not known to anyone Oh, okay. Right. He was inside Except that anybody and, who went into the uh, house. Well, he revealed himself to you, but that was also claimed to be an illusory realm. So you may exactly. be the only ones who actually believe that he's him. Right. So we will introduce them to each other as colleagues. <laughs> and they can have interesting discussions. I mean, um, I'm going to put my hand in the way of whatever Dudek was trying to, wherever it seemed like Dudek was trying to put the thing. Yeah, don't let him destroy his necklace, please. <laughs> He's still holding it in one hand. He's already kind of pulled it off his neck. But at at the realization when Tau Zek started laughing, there is that somewhat comical moment, which Annie can see perfectly where she's standing, of of uh, of uh, Dudek kind of like, but I I know it can work. Kind of covers over <laughs> his his face with his with his hand as if it can somehow capture the loud voice he just emitted. Rewind. Um. And and I'll between my teeth. That's not the point. <laughs> you can feel actually under your hand as you kind of reach down to touch the or to to cover over the spot where he's going to put it. It's a little warm to the touch, which most of the stone has not been. Well, it's all been really dry and cold at this point. Any other interesting actions? Uh, warm. I don't have that little bit of stir stone still, do I? Uh, I believe that's in the, the uh, lighthouse, isn't it? Right, it is. Because that could have done it, probably. Um, Silas is going to try and get that uh, necklace off the guy. Okay. Uh, give me a um, sleight of hand roll, please. It's not super 16. difficult because he's not resisting. 16 is plenty. Uh, yeah, oh. there's a little clasp in the back. It uh, Remarkably, the, the leather is still quite supple, and it comes off in your hand. Uh, as an interact action, can I grab the uh, 
lamp as well. Sure. I will say you still do detect a glow of magic from within the body or on the body somewhere, but this was the brightest and the easiest to get to. So there's okay. something else there, but this is something that you've you've clearly found. Yeah. The other seemed diffuse somehow, as if it wasn't in one location. Weird. Okay. Now that's all he does is a like a okay. last moment thing. All right. Um, kind of emerging then mostly all at once is that is one of those small uh, ball creatures and then moving a little bit swiftly um, kind of squeezing through you can just make out the edge of uh, two stones that are kind of covering over the round part of the center uh, and then kind of squeezing through that space in an impossible size is your familiar large ball shaped creature wearing a bow tie as you see <laughs> Tauzek Riva emerge and kind of take in the scene uh, his I... multiple eyes all looking across all of you well 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 I hadn't expected to see familiar faces although not all of you I know as well as I would like it's good to see you again, Tezek. And the eyes kind of spin over towards Met, towards Dudek. A few of them focus on Medric. And Annie, you know you're well hidden. You know you've got this in the bag. He can't see you. Even with this awkward pose that you have with your hand covering over something. But deep within you, and literally within, you hear a small female voice say, Oh no. And it sounds strangely familiar. But you can't place it just yet. And so... Coming face to face and eye to eye to eye to eye to eye to eye to eye <laughs> with Tauzek Riva. We'll pause there for the week. And whatever confrontation will happen, whether it be combat or com uh, co uh, conversation, we'll find out next time. I Any feel life? like I want to sculpt a little bow tie on this mini. <laughs> get a little piece of paper, you know, get a little bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> um, any any other questions in the scene just so we can establish a few facts if we need to before we head out again Annie you feel quite confident that you're hidden but yep. literally a little voice inside you says oh no no other no other questions you don't have to nope, not, just want to make sure that I, can I mean of, questions no. but none that, that will be answered <laughs> I just didn't want to leave you guys uh, ha uh, uh, hanging if there was something in particular that I hadn't, <laughs> hadn't quite detailed yet, but um, there you go. Well, uh, we will bring it to a close then. I want to thank my players for putting up with this weird situation. <laughs> Hopefully I've raised more questions than I've had answers. That's, uh, I think, a goal of mine. <laughs> um, Thanks for running. We Thank you very much. We will return in a couple of weeks to try to find out exactly what this confrontation will mean. Um, I will remind you that, you know, you can fight things, you can talk to them, you can do both at the same time, potentially, and I don't know where this is going to end up. I'm excited to find <laughs> out. Um, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching it, if you're watching it at home, on Twitch on Sundays, every other Sunday, starting at uh, 3 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time now. Um, and then later on, youtube.com slash ENCAF1, NCAF1. There you'll find the playlists for Legends of the Drowned Isles and also a specific one for Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. Uh, and otherwise, uh, you can find us also, Watchers of the Drowned Isles, on Facebook, where Pat very diligently puts together a summary of each session so you can catch up on what's happening there as well. Imagine 63 sessions of this particular campaign kind of feels like a, a lot which is in a good way yeah um, and we'll see we'll see where it goes next time thanks for thanks very much for watching thanks for playing guys 
We'll see you again another day.